All right, guys, this is my first try at uh, the bull, the ball sorting system with uh, the Easy V 2.26. So I'm going off of uh, Alador's video here uh, where he's got, uh, let's just run this here. He's got the silver going all the way down to the bottom, uh, the yellow going to the top, that way for the, the black here, and the black's going to the center here. So trying to mimic this same thing where I've got uh, the yellow on the top, the black in the center, and then the silver on the bottom. His is running nice and smoothly. Mine still has a little bit of hiccups. Uh, I'd appreciate some help if you have any uh, tips for me. So uh, Festo has provided this uh, in that uh, they've provided our outputs. The output uh, for zero is to eject my piston valve. And that is... Uh, this guy right here, so that would extend this and push down any balls that are in this column and have them go down. The next one is uh, gate one. So that is my uh, my first gate, I believe right here. And gate two right here is to extend this guy on the bottom. Then a number of uh, sensors there. Uh, we have the retract and the extend for this ejection piston. Then we've got a capacitive sensor, uh, and a diffuse sensor, and an inductive sensor. So those three sensors are mounted right here, looking at the ball that's sitting right here in front of those sensors. And then there's an optical sensor as well here, uh, a diffuse sensor, where it's got uh, showing that the ball is actually in the canal. Okay, The PLC program that Festo provided was uh, similar to this, where I've got uh, everything in series here, uh, but over here I've got a number of different outputs uh, in parallel. Now with the Festo, sorry, with the, the uh, Tweedo PLC program that I'm, I'm using, um, see how they've got output 0.0, .0? and then down here they've used the same output. Uh, my Tweedo doesn't like that. They can only allow me to use that output once. I think the Alan Bradley PLC only allows you to do to use an output once in the program as well. So I've uh, reconfigured this uh, PLC program that Festo's provided and tried to make it work with my own programming. So the way that I've done that, let's just bring up my Tweedo suite here. So I need to have the yellow on the top, I need to have the black in the center, and I need to have the, the metal bo um, balls on the bottom there. So the first line here I have that uh, if the capacitive sensor actually senses a ball and the diffuse sensor senses that ball, then that one is going to correspond to my yellow ball. So that would mean capacitive sensor looks at the presence of anything that's metal or non-metallic, right? So that's just the presence of a ball will trip that off. The diffuse sensor, I need to have something that has a decent amount of light that's coming off of it. Um, so that would come off of this ball and the inductive ball, right? Each of those would reflect the light, uh, whereas the black one would just absorb the light. Um, and then to distinguish between the yellow ball and the silver ball, I want to make sure that the inductive sensor is off. So again, that's going to correspond to the yellow ball. And the first gate is going to open, meaning that this one, this single acting cylinder is going to extend and place those yellow balls in the the front or the top uh, column here. Okay. I also had to put in this one right here that um, there was no, nothing in the uh, in the column here because what I was having was that as a ball was dropping down, um, then I was getting premature um, activation of each of these cylinders here, and they were ending up going into the wrong um, columns here. So the next one is uh, just the capacitive sensor is true. So if just the capacitive sensor is true and the diffuse sensor is false and the inductive sensor is false, then that is going to correspond to the black ball, right? The capacitive sensor is going to see the presence of the ball, uh, but the diffuse, if it's black, then the diffuse sen uh, optical sensor is not going to get light back to it, so it will be false. And obviously this is not a metal object, so the inductive sensor will be false as well. If these are true, then I have my second gate opening, so that is going to extend this single acting cylinder and have the black ball go into this storage area. 
Okay. In addition to that, um, I've got, uh, if all the sensors are true, so that would be this guy right here, right? Because of the capacitive sensor would be true, the diffuse sensor would be true, and the inductive sensor would be true. Rather than putting all those guys in there, I left all of them out. Um, and I'm just saying that uh, if the capacitive sensor is true and there's nothing in the canal, then start to energize this eject piston right here and push that ball out. And that ball, if none, none of these single acting cylinders are activated, then that ball is just going to travel all the way down to the bottom. Okay, finally, I need to uh, make each of these guys reset because you see that I've used a, a latch circuit here for the gates and for the eject. So if this is extended, I need a way to retract it. So as long as the, uh, the ball is no longer falling through here and the eject piston is in the retract position, meaning that it has pushed it out and then come back, then I want to reset each of my gates and make them go back. Finally, I need a way to uh, make this guy just extend and retract and extend and retract if there's a ball here. Um, and that is going to happen in that my extension is going to happen right here. All right, so if there's a capacitive sensor, there's nothing uh, in this column right here. Um, and the eject pist position, piston is in the retract position. Then I'm latching on this guy, so that's going to push the ball out. And then to reset that latch and make this go back, well, all I'm just saying is once it has extended and tripped off the sensor, then I want it to come right back. So I'm going to take away the latching portion of that circuit. So let's see how this works, guys. So I'm in the run mode here. I'm going to reset the balls and have them come up here. And we've got a, a black ball there. And you can see that the sec second gate is activated. Then we've got a metal ball. That one's supposed to travel all the way down to the bottom. Excellent. Okay, then we've got a yellow ball. Now, I don't like that, the, the jumping of the, the pistons. So if you have a way for me to fix that uh, through timers or something, um, I would appreciate it. See that little bump there? I don't like how it's bumping there or how each of these guys are bumping um, or chattering like that right there. Okay, but everything's working all right. right? The black balls are all going into the center. Yellows are going to the top. And again, this one's going to go to the center. If I reset this one more time, then I'll take your attention over to uh, the PLC program. So you can see that uh, right here, this is uh, extending this cylinder right here. So this is true right there, extending it and dropping it down. There we go. Now my second gate is right here. So let's take a look at this guy and this guy. So you can see that that is activated right now meaning that this is out, the black ball is going here. Again, this black ball activates this guy. Now it's deactivated. Nothing's activated right now and the silver ball goes down and the first gate is right here, right? So when this guy activates, then it moves my yellow ball over. Excellent, so have a look at uh, my program. And if you're working on this, uh, this guy at school, then send me a link and tell me uh, if you've got a better design. I'm going to work on this for the next uh, couple of days and see if I can come up with a, a better design. And then, uh, you know, the next step would be putting in some counters and stuff for uh, each of the different balls to keep track of how many are in each of the storage areas. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll see you on the next video.